Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, to give me the courage, the will, the words, the wisdom to speak. Lord, I pray they be your words, not my words. I pray all this in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing that's special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's dirt. I, I never, I never call myself or name myself Watchman. It was God who called me Watchman. And because when he called me to be a Watchman, that involved public speaking, I told God, no thank you, that I could not do what he asked me to do. And I am ashamed that I told God no. But then God got my attention, 6 a.m. one morning. And I thought he almost killed me to wake me up. And now I say, send me, Lord, send me. And I am only what God says that I am, nothing more and nothing less. I had a dream. I became aware that I was sitting in a tall chair in a clearing in the middle of the woods all alone. And for some strange reason, this did not seem odd or strange to me. Uh, it felt normal to be sitting in a chair in the middle of the woods at night alone and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit told me to pray so I closed my eyes I lowered my head I clasped my hands together before me and I, I bowed my head and I started to pray and it seemed as though it was only about 30 20 or 30 seconds when all of a sudden it felt just exactly like I had been shot out of a cannon. It was instantaneous acceleration. I went straight up, up and up and up. I went faster and faster until I felt like I was moving many thousands of miles per hour. And then I went even faster. I felt as if, as if I was moving faster than light. Now when this initially happened, I actually gasped for air. But immediately after that initial gasp, for air I felt at peace I felt comfortable like nothing could hurt me and I even started feeling like this was normal in a strange kind of way now I had no idea how long I was traveling up I never opened my eyes and time escaped me as I had no concept of time any longer and time had no meaning for me any longer now although I never opened my eyes in my mind's eye, I imagined that I was zipping past the moon, past the sun, past planets, and then whole galaxies. And all the while, I just kept going faster and faster. I felt as if I was traveling many thousands of times light speed, and I just kept going faster. But with all of that, I felt safe and secure in the knowledge that God held me in his hands and that nothing could harm me. I think the reason I never opened my eyes was that I was afraid that I, I would wake up if I did, and, and I did not want to wake up. No. So then I became aware that I was not traveling any longer, but I was standing, and I heard what sounded like a very large gathering of people around me. Now these people, they were all talking, individual conversations. I slowly opened my eyes, expecting that my eyes would have to adjust to the light in the room, but that was not the case. When I opened my eyes, I noticed that I was in this huge, huge ballroom, giant hall, with a huge throng of people, all standing around. Now these people, they, they were all talking amongst themselves, and, and rather excitedly. What I noticed was that all the people in, in the room uh, seemed to be in their 20s. Everyone was wearing brilliant white robes and sandals on their feet, including me. And everyone had a sash around their waist. Everyone seemed to be young, including myself. No one wore glasses. And uh, there was no missing teeth or missing fingers or toes. or There were no hearing aids, no metal joints. Everyone was perfect, as God is perfect. I started feeling a very real excitement welling up inside of me. And I, I started asking the people near me very excitedly, Did I just get raptured? Did I just get raptured? I know I was raptured. I had been raptured before and it felt just like this. Was I just raptured? But for some strange reason, everyone seemed busy. 
and no one answered me. And I have to explain at this point that I was so very excited. I, I felt like a kid in a candy store with the owner gone. Uh, I had the biggest smile on my face. And someone even commented that my smile went from ear to ear. Somehow that seemed funny, but, but true. The walls seemed to be several feet thick. The room was huge. I mean, absolutely huge, enormous. And it seemed to be carved out of a solid piece of stone. This great hall was half in the ground and half uh, above the ground and it had very high ceilings which had skylights and the sun seemed to be shining in from all directions as there was no shadows anywhere and I saw no light fixtures anywhere not one and I thought that was rather odd and I want to read Revelation 21 verse 22 and 23 and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. There was a, a short staircase that went up and outside, and that too was carved out of the same piece of uh, solid stone. Now I finally felt at peace, comfortable, finally at home, a place where I was loved beyond reason or understanding, where love has no words to describe it, and I felt a joy indescribable joy and love. The cares of this and worries of this world, of this earth, simply melted away into nothing. And even if you were on your deathbed back on this earth, that had no meaning in this place, as time had no meaning in this place. Then the people started talking very excitedly about going outside into the courtyard to see Jesus. And then everyone got very excited to finally see Jesus. And we all began moving up the hand-carved stair staircase into the courtyard. But as I began to move up the staircase, I woke up. A home, home, a place that you know, a place you belong, a place where you can find peace and rest and joy and love. Home, a place where you came from and a place you're returning to, a place called home. Now this is not a strange or a new place, but it is where you came from. And you only now realize that you are finally home back where you belong. If I keep having these rapture dreams, one day I will get to be raptured and I will be able to stay. And at least this will not be a new experience for me. I keep getting raptured, one day I will get to stay in heaven. If you have ever been raptured like I was raptured, you will spend the rest of your life trying to get back to that state of pure love, peace, grace, and rest, safe and secure in the arms of Jesus. I was a little let down, to say the least, that I was not allowed to stay in heaven, as I was there. I prayed and I prayed on this, and I was told by the Holy Spirit that I had more work to do back here in this earth. But then the Holy Spirit told me something that really, that really cheered me up, and he, he said the third time would be a charm. So I am anxious for that third rapture dream. As that, I, as that I know it will be for real and I will be able to stay in heaven. There is something the Holy Spirit pointed out to me in my dream, and that is that I have severe left knee pain as I have had two, two total knee replacement surgeries on my left knee and both surgeries turned out bad. Now I cannot walk or stand more than a minute and then I have to sit down somewhere. So for me to be sitting in a chair before I was raptured that seemed totally, nor totally normal to me and, and even expected. But after I was raptured, I was young again in my mid-twenties and, and I had no more knee, knee pains, no more problems. In fact, I felt perfect. And to be standing in that room with a bunch of people, it, seemed, uh, it just seemed normal to me. And we are so close to the rapture. We do not have years as those days are long gone. Are you watching the news? Even the news proclaims judgment comes. I was placing King James Bibles in local hospitals and doctor's offices and King James Bibles on DVD in plastic cases and businesses and especially local restaurants. But then my knee, it totally gave out on me and now my ability to walk is, is even more limited. But the Holy Spirit told me he would send me people who would be my knees and they would place King James Bibles all around the country and, and even in some countries around the world. 
So will you be my legs? Will, will you be my knees? And will you place King James Bibles in local waiting rooms and local businesses? I will supply to you free King James Bibles in print and also on DVD and plastic cases that you can place in businesses. Will you do this little work for Jesus? After all, look what Jesus did for you and for me. If you will do this little thing for God, contact me by email or write and request King James Bibles and I will send them right out to you. Now remember, our time here is very short. Whatever time we have left up on this earth, we need to be in, in the service of Almighty God as no name in heaven or on earth can save you, me, or, or anyone from what is to come except the name of Jesus. Judgment comes against America and it comes right quick. And the only way to survive what is to come is to not be here, as in being raptured. And now you are a blessing to me, to Bobby, and this ministry, as you were sent by God. And we love you all so very much. Stay strong in the faith as we go home very soon. And Bobby and I, we will look for you on the streets of gold one day very soon. Always remember that you are a precious child of the Most High, true living God, the God of Israel, who loves you and who treasures you above all the gold and above all the stars of heaven. And we love and treasure you as well. At this late hour, will you not do a little work for the, for the Lord? Will you drop off King James Bibles in your doctor's office waiting room and maybe a local hospital waiting room? Will you do this for Jesus, who has done so very much for you? One day you will see the nail holes in his hands and his feet and the scars on his back. And you will see the price that Jesus paid for you and for me. So will you not do a little work for the Lord? We also have King James Bibles on DVD and plastic cases, which are great to place in businesses and especially lo locally owned restaurants. But be sure to ask for permission first. If the Holy Spirit puts it in your heart to support this ministry, God's ministry, then all we ask is that you be faithful and true to the Holy Spirit. Every one of you have been a blessing, an absolute blessing, a gift from God to me and Bobby in this ministry. And we do not have partners. We have family in this ministry. And we love you like family. And we pray for you like family because you are family. Our prayer is may God open the windows of heaven and rain down blessings upon you and your household until your storehouses are bursting with increase. We love you and we keep you and your family in our prayers. And thank you, and God bless you for all that you do for, to God, to increase his kingdom and to save the lost. And God keep you, and God bless you, and may God's face shine down upon you and give you peace. With much love and more grace from above. Amen. Our time is so very short, but now is not the time to slack off and quit and rest. Now is the time to press on, to work even harder to work even harder because one day soon that eastern sky is going to roll up like a giant scroll and Jesus will step forward in the clouds that there will be a great trumpet blast and there will be a shout from an archangel and then the dead in Christ will rise out of the grave to be with Jesus in the air and then we which are left alive on this earth we will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air and where he is at is where we will be forevermore forevermore thank you jesus oh thank you jesus thank you jesus for making me a watchman and giving me this work to do lord and my prayer is that i be pleasing to you lord. that i be pleasing to you lord that is my prayer in jesus mighty mighty name amen